And today's challenge is going to be to overhaul this Datamatious Earth uh, filter, a 36 square foot uh, filter that works like a champ. Been here for a long time, pools uh, over 30 years old, so it's uh, doing a good job. Um, and right now it's running fairly low back pressure, and the pool is actually running pretty well, although I got to tell you, it's been been hit and miss it's uh clearly the diaphragm is uh on the on the pool cleaner is just barely chugging over it wasn't moving at all this morning so it's time to to do it i haven't done it for a few years so it's time to put in new uh new filter grid uh in the device so let's get that thing started you might notice that this uh is in the backwash position i've opened the air valve up here uh, to let the let this thing drain okay. Turn off the filter make sure it's off. We don't want that coming on in the middle of the middle of the process Okay, let's see what we got going on in here All right, like I said, there's gonna be some mud. I've seen worse. Uh, it's definitely, definitely muddy. You might want to keep this uh, this filter that may or may not be included with the kit you get. So hang on to that. Let's get this thing cleaned up a little bit. Get the worst worst of it off. Okay, no easy way around this one, folks. You just have to get in. There are lift here handles on these ends, uh, fairly close to this pipe as well. Uh, you just have to wiggle the thing out of position, lift it out, and it will be heavy. It's got a lot of crap on it, so we've got to get this out where we can clean it up and get the new one assembled. And yes, there's a fair amount of sludge going to remain in the bottom no matter what you do. Uh, so just clean it up. Be careful, there will be fiberglass. Uh, you might want to wear gloves to do this. There's uh, fiberglass edges in here that can be extremely sharp, so uh, don't get yourself cut up. Check the condition of this O-ring. As long as it's still standing out proud of the pipe, it should be fine. I could tell by pulling it off it was still nice and snug. Uh, I don't think I'll go more than one more uh, one more rebuild on that one, but uh, I think it's okay for now. Also, this is look at the O-ring around the edge. Uh, you want to clean that up. We'll probably be applying some more uh, little lubricant to it just to help it seal when we're done. But for now, let's go ahead and start working on the manifold. Okay, and here's what you're looking at, folks. This is fairly typical of a uh, one that's been in there a while. Uh, the, the grids are kind of nasty. You can see they're starting to collapse a little bit from the pressure. Um, this one is not as bad as other ones I've actually had where I've uh, run them until they've really started to come apart. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just, if you were cleaning this one up, what you would do is you would start pressure washing it, knock all this crud off it. Uh, whether or not you take it all apart uh, is up to you, but you can see that in between the grids, it's just packed with, with dirt. So since I'm not gonna be reusing these, I'm just gonna turn this whole thing up into a container and start disassembling it. All right, now one of the important things to know is that the one bolt that holds this thing all together is here on the bottom. So you have to get this thing upside down to do anything to it. Uh, and remember, it's old plastic, so try not to stress it out more than you absolutely have to. You're gonna to want to use a uh, 12 millimeter or SAE equivalent, uh, which is, I think, a 916. Um, on this, this nut, 
it's not going to be real tight this one was really barely finger tight uh, but once you get that off then this bottom bottom part of the grid can come off and you can start disassembling this thing in earnest okay, and they just pull out do it gently you do not want to break the old plastic uh, the old plastic manifold uh, because those are expensive it might even be hard to come by so you're going to be pulling these out they're all going to look more or less the same but you do have this short one that goes in next that goes in next to this pipe the one that ends by this uh this this return hose here is the short one so keep that in mind so you can see compared to the other ones it's uh definitely shorter so let's get these all out get them dispositioned Okay, next step, I'm gonna rinse off the uh, gonna rinse off the manifold. I'm gonna use a pressure washer. You could use just regular hose, but hey, if you got a pressure washer and it lives two feet away from your pool filter, use it. Okay, and here's the new new uh, filter grids, and you can see they just look a lot nicer than the old ones. And there should be a short one, and uh, we got to find that so we know where it's at, and we'll start assembling this beast. Okay, and you'll notice there are tabs inside each of these. Uh, they're, they're indexing tabs to make sure that you get these put in the right direction. You can see there are slots on the bottom of the... Uh, of the actual uh, device here so you can uh, slide it in if it's correct it'll go in snugly and you'll see that this there's a little little uh, catch here for the body to hold it in alignment so when you get done they will be tightly wound around this spool and just go ahead and rinse and repeat that process adding the additional grids until you're done saving the uh, the short grid for where it bumps up against that feed tube. Okay, when you're done, you should have something that looks like this, your classic starburst pattern. Um, that's all looking good. Make sure that the... Uh, that the grids are all captured by the little little clips all the way around. Uh, that's important. And now it's time to put the bottom on. Okay, it's important that you get this on correctly. These notches go down and they help capture these, uh, these elements here uh, to hold them in place. Uh, also, so that they'll fit inside the uh, inside the filter, of course. So um, you will be fiddling with this a little bit uh, to get these all seated, so that they're all lined up and will drop into place. Uh, not difficult; just takes takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of finesse to get them down. Just push them until they're all lined up where they need to be, and it will drop down into place. Okay, there we go. And you can see that these notches are all now filled with uh, filter grids. So there's not going to be any movement in there. At least none that matters. Uh, and at this point, you should be able to 
reinstall the nut and tighten it down uh, it doesn't have to be gorilla tight folks just snug and then just a little bit more just to hold it into place uh once it's in the once it's in the filter housing it's not going to go anywhere anyway so uh just again snug and give it another maybe half a turn to turn Okay, that's snug, and I'm just going to give it another another turn and call it a day. Not That's not any real torque, folks. It's uh, nothing like you're going to put on a uh, manifold bolt on a Chevy pickup truck. Check the top. Make sure everything looks copacetic. Make sure everything is fully seated. Uh, all the grids look like they're fully into their respective tubes. We're ready to drop this thing back into filter housing and get busy. Okay, folks, I'm going to use a little magic lube on this thing. Uh, your ubiquitous tube of gunk that is uh, used universally on just about all this stuff. Uh, just to give that little schmear on that O-ring, just to help it seal and also to help the uh, manifold slide down over it. Because now all you have to do is lift, lift the manifold, again, using the... Uh, the handy handles that are built into it and just drop it down with that the manifold entry on top of the on top of that tube wiggle it into place and don't forget to put the little little filter cap back on place goes up here uh, this one gets crushed by the pressure uh, doesn't seem to matter. Okay, and in case you don't remember, put the washer on, and then the spring, and then put in this shouldered nut. And it needs to be tight, but again, not gorilla tight. Uh, there is a spec for this. I'm not going to pretend to pass it along because it's very likely different for different, uh, different filter housings. So I'm just going to run this one down to what I feel is appropriate. to do it I'm gonna flip on the breaker and the pump and here's it could be a little interesting folks uh, you might have to uh, take extraordinary measures to get your pump prime mine is in pretty good shape it's a new uh, new pump new uh, everything I've got the uh, I've got the air release here open so that as this fills up with water it's going to expel the air out, and once once the uh, water starts coming out here, I'll shut the valve, and we should have flow. Let's see what happens. Okay, running like a champ, and I'm going to also I'm going to take this opportunity to test out the uh, the backflow valve since if I can. Uh, I'm going to oh boy, that is so much nicer than the old one. I got to tell you, folks, that no comparison. All right. Uh, I don't have any DE in the filter yet, so I'm not going to lose anything by doing this. Let's see, yeah. Whoa. There we go. Lots of flow. We are good to go. All right, and with any luck, you still have a tag like this on the back of your filter. Uh, and it's going to tell you what you need to know. In this case, it's telling you, because this is, this is punched out down here, uh, that this is a 36 square foot uh, filter and the thing we're looking for right now is the amount of diatomaceous earth that is required in pounds and this is telling me um, if I get my finger out of the way 
you can see it's 3.5 pounds of diatomaceous earth. All right, so now the trick is to add three and a half pounds of DE to the pool. And to do that, what I've done is I put a four cup measuring cup on my scales here. I can do it by weight, I can do it by volume. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've, in the previously, I've used the, the two cups to one pound ratio, uh, which is probably quite, quite close. I don't think it's really gonna be a problem. But I'm gonna just start adding here and see what we get. See, this, this might be fluffier than normal DE. So, and in fact it is, I can see that it's going to be quite a lot to get to 3.5 pounds. All right, so let's just do it at, uh, I'll do 12 ounces. Now nah, just do 10 ounces. Okay, 10 ounces at a time. That means I'm going to need 56 ounces of DE. And... Uh, I've read where it's a good idea to make a slurry of this. I'm not going to worry about it. I've seen my pool guys do this a million times. And there's no way in the world that's not going to be a slurry by the time it gets back to my pool. My actual pump. So, alright. There's first 10 ounces. 46 to go. Six. 56 total. All right. Okay, my pool cleaner is running around. It's very happy. You can see how jerky the hose is. That's a, that's a happy pool cleaner. It's a Barracuda pool cleaner. Running like a champ. We go back and check our work back here. And lo and behold, there are no leaks. We've got a nice low pressure. We're looking at, oh, this is probably four pounds of back pressure, which is probably just ideal. Uh, check around the circumference. No leaks there. Uh, and don't forget to reset your pool timer because it's obviously been off for quite a while while I was doing all this. So, all right. That pretty much wraps it up, folks. We are back in business, and it's probably good for another 30 years before I have to mess with at least that and the uh, filter is rebuilt I won't have to mess with that for at least a year or two so good to go